Hi, you're watching Dissecting to Serbia, and this is uh, Magnum PI. Actually, it's Jason Lacko, and he's from United Steel Workers. Local 1 2010, yep. Thunder Bay Coppice Casing. Yeah. I'm the business representative here in Thunder Bay, and I'm also the recording secretary for the local. Well, you did it better than me. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we did another a video, and something happened to the mic, and we never got any audio. So today, we're going to do another vi another try at this, and hopefully everything goes good. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Softwood Lumber Agreement. Um, just so you guys know, uh, the Softwood Lumber Agreement's been going on for, what, about 20 years now? Yes. Um, it's long-standing between the United States and Canada. And what's essentially happening is the uh, United States is saying that we're un it's unfair for how we get our wood. Yeah. Um, and, they, and they think we're getting subsidies. Uh, every time it goes to court... It is proven in our favor. We've always won. So I'm sure this time around it'll be the same thing. The problem is there's someone else in in the presidency that might take a uh, screw things up. Yeah. So well, the the World Trade Organization has uh, ruled countless times in regards yes. to softwood lumber in favor of Canada. So at the end of the day, it's 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 a, do we want to take the fight on and 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 you know follow through with it this that this time the the conservatives last time had the Americans against the wall and, 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 uh, you know, we didn't follow through. They ended up, uh, coming to a settlement. And then here we had, uh, the 10 year agreement that we had that just expired in, uh, two Octobers ago. Yeah. It essentially they, the, the government has been, I don't know how to put it, but, um, we've been lobbying the government, uh, with our union, and y your union is going to be going to... Yeah, uh, June 12th, or, well, actually scratch that, okay? Uh, sometime in June, we're going to uh, um, uh, Washington, D.C. We're sending a delegation from our local. We're, uh, I believe we're meeting a couple other delegates from other locals uh, that are forestry-based. Uh, we have 2,500 members, probably 80% of them are forest-based uh, industries. So it's, it's a vitally important uh, issue in regards to our local. Uh, United Steelworkers in general has 200,000 members that are dependent on forestry practices and, and uh, sawmills and, and woodlands and all those types of operations. So like I said, our delegation is going to consist of uh, four or five people. Uh, we're going to go down, we're going to do what we can to lobby, uh, create a ruckus, create mm -hmm. whatever we need to do to uh, shed some light on the, the situation. Uh, down there and uh, see I think a lot of people like in places like southern Ontario and and, and those areas where logging and and forestry industry isn't prominent they don't even know about it they don't understand it's a 60 billion dollar a year or even more maybe uh, industry that industry is one I think it's the third largest industry behind oil mining and in us right and you lose that. There's so many jobs lost, and and indirect, uh, like indirect jobs to the industry. So you have your lumber mills and your paper mills. Everything spans out behind that in small communities, especially small communities in northwestern Ontario and places like that. Yeah, northeastern Ontario yeah. as well. Yes. Uh, yeah, like you know, when you go up to um, a lot of those sawmills are mom and pop too, so they're not going to be able to survive a twenty or even a ten percent tariff on top of their regular. Uh, Output. No, and then that's that's the thing that the, 10 years ago, there was a lot of uh, those mom and pop business, as you call them. A lot of them uh, disappeared. Yes. Um, well, so. the, from the last one. Right. And and the last one, it took us five years, I think, five years just to fight that. And in the meantime, we had to pay those duties and those tariffs. <clears throat> and I think it was the, the U.S. government owed us, fifth, uh, I think it was $5 billion back. We only got four. And then that money went back to the companies, but nothing really went into the communities. That's right. Or the people. Um, I know we, and, and when we were going down, we went down to Ottawa a couple of months ago. Um, one of our big things was, while this is going on, are you going to help the workers? Are you going to ha uh, help them be placed in other jobs? Uh, help them economically? Because you never did that last time. Um, and you're... Your president, or 
Yeah, uh, he was well, there, and he said the same thing. That is a big issue that we it, are pushing. Exactly. This time. The, the last time we all the uh, tariffs that were collected that were returned back uh, to Canada, they went in the government coffers, right? Yes, they yes, didn't. Exactly. They, they weren't put back in the communities for to to help regenerate the communities that were you know essentially destroyed. We lost you know a lot of people went out west. They went wherever they needed to go to work, mm -hmm. and you know what. Uh, it's it's a tough go to get these people to come back uh, yeah. to to work. So it it, it was that was a long standing uh, you know issue that's had a trickle effect uh, for the last decade. So hopefully that it, this doesn't go on as far as it did that time. Yeah, I I, I think too the the uh, uh, south of the border and the U S side they don't realize and a lot of people don't realize you know they're talking about all the things that are going on there right now. They don't realize how much this can jeopardize. Uh, the housing starts and uh, other people's jobs in the United States. I think there's, I mean, there was some numbers on the amount of jobs that are dependent on Canadian lumber going into the United States, um, but I, I don't know the exact numbers. But they were around well, the, the American, couple hundred thousand, anyways. Yeah, the American Home Builders Association has gone on the records in full support of Canadian yes. softwood lumber. So, yeah. and they're the ones that are gonna, you know, they drive the market in regards to the housing starts, etc. So, yeah. if, the, if the lumber is is any way, shape, or form a little bit more expensive, then it's a suffer. Then the Americans uh, home suffer. builders, you know, and that again, there's indirect jobs there with construction and to mm -hmm. transport and to do all the, you know, yeah. carpenters and everything. So yeah. there's a residual effect. Uh, well, I mean, throughout. just in Thunder Bay alone, just you know, at the uh, the Resolute Mill, I mean, there's got to be 20 trucks a day going back at, and forth. So at the Resolute Thunder Bay, yeah. Mill. So you, you know, you imagine that that will slow down. And housing starts to go down, and and that just it's not a good uh, it's not good for anybody. No. So. Uh, well, you know, uh, the United Steelworkers is going to do their part. We do have brothers and sisters that are based in the United States in regards to having their sawmills. We have uh, representation there. Um, you know, we're going to do our part to uh, lobby what we can for uh, softwood lumber in general. Um, you know, uh, at the end of the day. We're going to bend as many years as we can. Yep. And, uh, you know, after we come back, maybe we could do a follow-up interview and I'll let you yeah. know how it went. See how it went. I mean, hopefully our uh, Trudeau and the uh, Liberals will stand tough. They seem to be talking tough. We'll see how they are when it comes time to push and shove here. But Well, you know, they have threats and they want to... Uh, threats you know, a threat, though. Well, they want to tax, they want to tax the... Uh, they put an import tax on the coal coming in from Washington and yeah. perhaps a couple other things, but... Yeah. You know, it, that might be a little bit premature, but yeah. we'll see, you know, we'll see how, how, where that ends up. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, hopefully you'll get to talk to us after. We'll set up a uh, date when you come back, and we'll see how everything went and uh, how Absolutely. you feel. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Well, it was nice. Thanks for dropping in. Yep. Yeah, Welcome to our humble abode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay.